You're watching Tag TV. You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Indian security forces eliminate three LAT terrorists in encounter. United States Blinken says Taliban attacks in Afghanistan are deeply troubling. And situation in Afghanistan continues to deteriorate amid Taliban offensive. Last year, Kashmir Valley witnessed widespread anti-terror operations that resulted in the killing of the highest number of terrorists. The same success story of Indian security forces is being repeated this year as terrorists in the valley are suffering huge losses with the killing of their commanders. The recent spur in the encounters and arrests of terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir is taking the counter-insurgency operations to the next level. We we'll take a look. Hours of relentless exchange of bullets killed three terrorists of a Pakistan-based terror outfit, lashkar e taiba in Bandepura region of Jammu and Kashmir. In a similar incident, one more terrorist was killed in Kulgam region of the Union Territory. A joint team of security forces launched a cordon and search operation after receiving specific inputs about the presence of terrorists in the areas. In the past couple of months, several terrorists have been eliminated by Indian security forces in Kashmir. With such successful operations, one after another, the entire ecosystem of terrorists across the valley has come to a standstill. परसों कुलगांव पुलिस को एक तला मिली थी कि शोक बाबा फॉरेस्ट जो है बांडीपुर में आ, उसमें तीन चार मिलिटेंट आए हुए हैं और खास करके साकिर अल्ताफ बाबा जो 2018 में बागा बॉर्डर से पाकिस्तान गया था वो भी उस ग्रुप के साथ आया है ये सारे एलईडी के ग्रुप है तो बांडीपुर पुलिस और आर्मी मिलके कॉर्डन डाला सर्च करते ही फायरिंग शुरू हो गया जिसमें हमारे एक जवान आर्मी के जख्मी हो गए बाद में उसको एयरलिफ्ट करके सीने लाया गया उसका हालत अभी बिल्कुल ठीक है और तीन टेररिस्ट मारे गए जिसमें एक साकिर अल्ताफ बाबा है लोकल टेरिस्ट एलिटी का और दो एफ है अभी सर्च ऑपरेशन चल रहा है हम लोग इतला है कि एक से दो टेरिस्ट और हो सकता है इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ दिस ईयर इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान अग्रीड टू रिड्यूस टेंशन एंड मेनटेन अज फायर अलॉन्ग द बॉर्डर इन कश्मीर द पीस विद इन द वैली कोड हवेवा sustained for just a couple of months as Pakistan resumed terror activities and infiltration attempts along the border. According to sources, four infiltration attempts were made by Pakistan in the last week, during which as many as 20 terrorists are learned to have entered Kashmir. There has been an increase in the participation of foreign terrorists in attacks on security forces. According to intelligence reports, there are over 200 terrorists active in the valley with 40% of them having infiltrated from Pakistan. However, India is effectively thwarting all its devious agendas. As per the data by Indian government sources, till July 2021, the security forces were engaged in 40 operations and of the 95 terrorists killed, 89 were killed in Kashmir and 6 in Jammu. Total 10 foreign terrorists were also killed during this period. After temporary reduction in terrorist cases on LOC and holding of ceasefire, there has been a very significant spike in Pakistan-backed terrorist activities in JNK. I see that Pakistan's obsession with JNK can never end. Pakistan's desire to merge Jammu and Kashmir with Pakistan can never end. So therefore, what is the answer? The answer is, we have to remain highly alert. We have to be in proactive mode. We have to be in aggressive mode. We have to keep destroying the launch pads which Pakistan keeps building near LOC. 
we have to put Pakistan on back foot. Pakistan-backed Lashkar-e Taiba has of late stepped up operations in Jammu and Kashmir. Among the total terrorists killed this year, half were from LET. They have targeted several innocent civilians and security officials without any protection in Kashmir. They are desperately trying to create an atmosphere of fear and terror among people that would hinder the economy and progress in the valley. Laskere Toba is unleashing terror in Jammu and Kashmir. The principal reason which I feel is that Pakistan wants to remain in news with regard to JNK issue. It, by creating terror in Jammu and Kashmir, it wants to show to the world that Jammu and Kashmir is a disputed area. There is a problem in Jammu and Kashmir. They are snakes. If they are left, they will try to escape and again innocent people will become victim of this terrorist. So the strategy should be locate, shoot and kill. The Indian army has to destroy the sympathizers and cater of Lashkar-e Tawa who were operating from the soil of Jammu and Kashmir. Meanwhile, terror recruitment in the valley has seen a reduction in respect to last year. In terms of recruitment till July 15 this year, 69 individuals joined the terror ranks compared with 85 in the corresponding period last year. Much of the recruitment has been from the three South Kashmir districts, Kulgam, Shopian and Pulwama. Overall in 2020, 174 individuals turned militants compared with 143 in 2019. Pakistan's intelligence agency and terror groups are now invading cyberspace for recruitment in Jammu and Kashmir as direct physical interactions have become difficult due to the security forces' hawk-eyed vigil. As per security forces, technological interventions have helped curb recruitment in the valley besides intensification on counter-terrorism operations. Let's now move to Afghanistan, which faces a confluence of multiple crises just as President Biden withdraws American forces. Beyond the pandemic drought and a dire economy, the country confronts a resurgent Taliban movement that now controls or contests more of the country's territory than at any time since 2001. Recently, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited India and raised concerns over the Taliban's intentions and Afghanistan's future. This recently emerged video is showing people protesting and raising their voice against the atrocities of Taliban and Pakistan, which has been taking advantage of current chaos and is openly supporting Taliban to gain stronghold against Afghan government. This is Afghanistan's diaspora living in California, which recently took to the streets to protest against Taliban's carnage. Afghanistan is on course to witness the highest number of documented civilian casualties in a single year since the United Nations assistance mission in Afghanistan records began. Recently, on a two-day visit to India, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken expressed concerns over the motives of Taliban and increasing attacks on civilians in Afghanistan. Blinken referred to atrocities committed by the Taliban in areas the group had taken over and said an Afghanistan that didn't respect the rights of its people would become a pariah state. Yes, certainly what we're seeing uh, on the ground in the, <clears throat> last, uh, in the last week is the Taliban making uh, advances on uh, district centers, uh, challenging some uh, provincial capitals. Uh, we've also seen these reports of atrocities committed by the Taliban in areas that it's, uh, that it's taken over uh, that are um, deeply, uh, deeply troubling uh, and certainly do not uh, uh, speak well to the Taliban's intentions for, uh, for the country uh, as a whole. Afghanistan is battling every day to survive and the Taliban is beating the drum of victory. It seems to have rolled up its sleeves to reimpose its regime. However, Washington has made it clear that taking Afghanistan by force won't grant Taliban international recognition. 
the Taliban says that um, it, uh, it seeks international recognition, that um, it wants uh, international support uh, for Afghanistan. Presumably it wants its leaders to be able to travel freely in the world, uh, sanctions lifted, uh, et cetera. Uh, well, the uh, taking over the country uh, by force and abusing the rights of its people uh, is not the path to achieve those objectives. Um, there's only one path, and that's at the negotiating uh, table to resolve the conflict uh, peacefully and to have an Afghanistan emerge that is governed uh, in uh, a genuinely inclusive way and that's representative uh, of all its people. The overall trend is clearly unfavorable to the Afghan government, which could face an existential crisis if it is not addressed and reversed. The Taliban, beyond having momentum, appear to have definitive psychological edge. They want to return to power and the support of Afghanistan remains an enormous asset in their favor. Recently, a report prepared by UN Analytical Support and Sanctions Monitoring Team also said that the terrorists belonging to Tehreek Taliban Pakistan support the Taliban insurgents inside Afghanistan against Afghan forces. India thus has clarified that the independence and sovereignty of Afghanistan can only be ensured if it is free from malign influences. We don't think outcomes should be decided by force on the battlefield. Uh, we think uh, the peace negotiations should be a negotiation and should lead to peace. It should see cessation of violence. There should be a political settlement. So that is wh where we are uh, looking at. And I think there is a broad consensus, uh, deep consensus. Uh, most of the neighbors of Afghanistan uh, agree with that. Uh, now, I grant you not everybody who agrees d does what they uh, say they would do. Uh, I noted the exception which you have pointed out to. Uh, but I think uh, that is a reality which is not new. That is a reality over the last 20 years. A negotiated peace in Afghanistan presents a number of challenges. If there is no peace in Afghanistan, there will be a major threat in the region and beyond as Afghanistan is the first line of defense against terrorism not only for itself but for the entire world. Moving on, the Taliban are advancing relentlessly across Afghanistan. Several districts have fallen victim to Taliban's terror, while at one site they are continuously targeting Afghan security forces on a daily basis, artists too are bearing the brunt. Recently, popular Afghan comedian and entertainer Nazar Mohammed was murdered in Kandahar province by the Taliban, a report. A popular comedian was among several people killed by Taliban forces in Afghanistan, where tens of thousands of refugees are fleeing the advancing Taliban terrorists. Nazar Mohammed, Afghanistan's popular comedian, was dragged from his home and killed by the Taliban. This video is from moments before his killing that showed Nazar Muhammad, better known as Khasa Zwan, being slapped and harassed at gunpoint just moments ahead of his killing. Photos also emerged on social media showing Khasa tied to a tree before his execution and then on the ground with his throat slit. His killing has raised fears among the Afghan artists and entertainers as Taliban have always been intolerant of art and humor. It outlawed dozens of seemingly innocuous activities and pastimes in Afghanistan during its 1996-2001 rules, including kite flying, TV soap operas, and even playing music. The way they have killed this comedian and the video that is viral shows that Taliban has not changed. They are going to stick to the same Sharia laws that they uh, did when in the earlier stint in the 90s, people who say that Taliban, this Taliban is changed from that Taliban, there is nothing changed. They are going to remain the same and it is going to be a tragedy for the artists over there, whether they are performing artists, whether they are art and crafts or whether even they are movie uh, theatre artists or 
the women and children over there. This comes as the Taliban intensified attack against the Afghan security forces and claimed to have captured nearly 70% of Afghanistan. In just the past two weeks, at least 33 people, including religious scholars, tribal elders, and journalists, have been murdered by the Taliban in Kandhar, considered the birthplace of the radical Islamist group. Tolu News, an Afghan news organization, reported last week that over 100 civilians were killed by unidentified gunmen in the spin Bolduk district of Kandhar. A UN report has revealed that the number of civilian casualties in Afghanistan reached a record high in the first half of 2021 as the conflicts continued to escalate amid US and NATO troops withdrawal. Taliban has been getting a run over the country as soon as America started withdrawing its troops shows that there is no resistance from the Afghanistan army and whatever resistance is there now they are trying to protect the cities over there that are in Afghanistan and now after the support of Americans they have assured the government over there in Afghanistan that they would resume the aerial bombing of Taliban and also arms supply to the government over there this sort of a thing will carry on the fight between the Afghanistan army and the Taliban and this would become another flashpoint like Syria wherein the civil war would be there and the people would suffer. As Afghanistan battles chaos and uncertainty, China that recently hosted a nine-member Taliban delegation headed by Afghan Taliban political committee chief Mullah Abdul Ghani Biradar in Tianjin seems to be working on its big plan. It is attempting to establish friendly ties with the Taliban. China is trying to secure its interest in the post-US Afghanistan and this active engagement is covered under the name of Belt and Road Initiative. Beijing has invested heavily in its Belt and Road Trade and Infrastructure Scheme and China's Foreign Ministry has previously discussed the possibility of extending the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor into Afghanistan. China is also concerned that under Taliban rule, Afghanistan will become a hub for the East Turkestan Islamic Movement, a separatist outfit aligned to Al-Qaeda, which is waging an insurgency in Xinjiang. Now this meeting comes at a time when the insurgent group has been craving for legitimacy. The Taliban is constantly reaching out to the countries from the region in the expectation of becoming a major player in controlling Afghanistan. Moving on, horrific acts of terrorism such as the November 2008 attacks in Mumbai underscore the regional nature of the terrorist threat in South Asia and they highlight the need for greater cooperation within the region to address it. Terrorism is a multifaceted reality which calls for international community to forge stronger engagement on a policy for counter-terrorism. In South Asia, the terrorism flourishes from the lands of Pakistan and Afghanistan and as a cause of worry for regional security. Let's take a look. The events of September 11, 2001 brought terrorism to the forefront of the international community's security agenda. However, while this has highlighted the threat posed by jihadist terrorism, South Asia has been a victim of violence perpetrated by myriad of groups with diverse objectives and varied ideologies. Experts point to the role of the United Nations and its role in promoting counter-terrorism cooperation and capacity building activities in the region in the framework of the UN strategy. It is believed that the UN, under the direction of the Counter-Terrorism Implementation Task Force, should develop a strategy for such engagement as part of an effort to link the global body more closely to South Asian counter-terrorism needs and priorities. The President-elect of United Nations General Assembly said terrorism is a scourge and will be dealt jointly. Terrorism is a scourge uh, that has uh, been in this region, in many parts of uh, the world, and which has uh, taken the lives of so many civilians. Uh, it does not know any religion, no borders, uh, no 
humanity. It's an evil. And we need to uh, address it comprehensively. The United Nations uh, has been slow in coming up with the definition. I hope uh, that the definition would be reached soon. In South Asia, the terrorism perpetrators from Pakistan and its border with Afghanistan that poses a threat to regional and global security. Pakistan-based terror groups, be it Al-Qaeda, Haqqani Network or the Taliban, are enjoying state sponsorship to create mayhem in Afghanistan and parts of India. Despite remaining on the grey list of the Financial Action Task Force, the global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog, Pakistan is using terror outfits for its proxy war against its neighbours. When asked about state sponsorship and support of terrorism by Pakistan, Shahid said that the United Nations deals with terrorism issues in the Sixth Committee, the convention that has been mandated to come out of the Sixth Committee continues to be negotiated. The United Nations uh, deals with terrorism issues in the Sixth Committee, uh, the convention that has been uh, mandated uh, to come out of the Sixth Committee is uh, continues to be uh, negotiated. Uh, so I'm hoping that the 76th session will see some progress. Uh, yes, you're right, we support the uh, membership of, the, of India uh, in the Security Council as a permanent member. As the President of the General Assembly, uh, it will be my role uh, to bring uh, countries together uh, and try to form a broader consensus on uh, the Security Council reform process. India continues to raise the issue of Pakistan sponsored terrorism at the United Nations. Indian Foreign Secretary Harshwadan Shringla, while addressing the UN Security Council briefing, recently said that terrorism compounds the twin problems of violence against humanitarian personnel and lack of accountability and sanctioning those responsible for violating humanitarian law should have wider regional and international support. India chairs the Taliban Sanctions Committee and Counter-Terrorism Committee and continue to raise voice against terrorism for maintaining peace and development in the region and rest of the world. And with that, we come to the end of this episode of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Karim Zumek signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.